everyone. My name is Libby. I work for the North Carolina Arboretum. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about reptiles and amphibians. And I'm actually going to take my mask down just for this so that y'all can hear, make sure you can hear my voice clearly. Um, but thanks to y'all for joining me. Um, I have some animals, some very special animals that I brought with me. These animals all fall under the study of herpetology. That's a really big science word. Herpetology is the study of reptiles and amphibians. So I bet if you thought really hard, you could probably think of your favorite reptile or amphibian. Uh, maybe it's an animal you've seen recently near your home. Maybe it's an animal that doesn't live in North Carolina that you've learned about, maybe through a book or on the internet. Um, so while we're going through our program today, I invite you to think about your favorite reptile and amphibian. Um, so before we dive into taking some of my critters out of their boxes, we can talk a little bit about what a reptile and amphibian is. Um, so these two kinds of animals are really closely related. They have a lot of similarities, but they also have a lot of differences too. Um, so when we think about reptiles, we think about animals that have scaly skin. We think about animals that um, lay eggs. Most of them lay eggs. Um, they lay hard-shelled eggs that they dig in the ground. Not all reptiles do. Some do have live birth, like a copperhead snake actually um, does not lay eggs. Um, and all reptiles are cold-blooded animals, which means that they have to um, always be kind of stressed and worried. They have to kind of regulate their own, um, their own body temperature. Um, so we might have to put on like a coat or a sweater if it gets cold outside, but we don't have to go sit in the sun and sit and bask on a rock um, to make sure our temperature is at the right level, our body temperature. So a reptile does, so you might see certain reptiles sitting out and basking, and that's to help warm themselves up. So all reptiles are also cold-blooded. Um, so I have my first example of a reptile with me. Um, I'm going to start with our native reptile. So if an animal is native to North Carolina, that means that they're from here. That means they're originally from North Carolina. Um, so the native animal that I have with me is Willow here. She is an eastern box turtle. Um, so box turtles are really good examples of reptiles. They've got scaly skin on their legs um, and they also lay hard-shelled eggs. Now Willow here is a young box turtle so you probably may not have seen some quite this small. Um, they do get to be a little bigger um, but Willow is, even though she's small, she's about 10 years old. Um, so she may look little, but she's actually not all that young. Um, they can live to be close to 80 um, years old in captivity. In the wild, they are a little younger than that, maybe 60 years old or so. Um, but Willow here still has a lot of, a lot of life ahead of her. Um, what makes box turtles really interesting and unique is that they have a hinge on the bottom of their shell. Now this hinge will help them close up um, like a door. So if you think how you can slam a door shut, they can slam their shell shut. Um, and that helps them um, stay protected from predators. So um, the shell is a really interesting adaptation uh, because it's like their home and their protection that they carry around with them all the time. Um, so most box turtles don't have a hinge like this at the, on the bottom of their shell. Um, so that's a really unique thing about our eastern box turtles. 
Um, also, they have little lines on their shell that you can count and you can see how old that box turtle is. Um, now that's only, um, you can only really use that until they're about 35. Once they're 35, their shell actually stops growing, so they're not going to grow new rings. Um, but for the, our younger turtles, you can um, kind of get a good guess on their age by the amount of lines on their shell, just like you would maybe age a tree by counting the lines. Um, these box turtles are our state reptile. So they're really important reptiles to North Carolina. Um, but sadly, their numbers are starting to decrease. Um, and scientists are starting to get a little worried about our box turtle populations. Um, a lot of people, um, it's because a lot, a lot of people do like to keep these box turtles as pets. Um, and I can't say I blame them all that much because she um, is so cute, Willow is adorable, and they're actually relatively friendly turtles. So like, besides maybe sticking your finger in front of a box turtle's mouth, other than that, they're probably not going to bite you, unlike some other turtles that you might find. Um, so I get it. I totally understand the, the desire to have these guys as pets. Um, but box turtles are always the happiest and the healthiest when they are um, kept in the wild. Um, so it's important to keep them where you find them. So if you see a box turtle outside, um, congratulations, it is your lucky day. You found a box turtle. Um, but you'll want to keep them kind of where you found them. So take photos of them. Uh, definitely, you know, observe them, take a look at them, spend a little time with them, and then keep them where they are. Um, another reason box turtles are on decline is because they, um, they will often get hit by cars. Um, so one of box turtles' favorite foods is an earthworm. And a lot of times with these guys, the juicier, the better. They love big, fat, juicy earthworms. So when it's raining, the earthworms come out of the ground, right? So you might see a lot of earthworms on the sidewalk during kind of a, a cool summer day. So that's when these box turtles come out too. So if it's a kind of a, a cooler, rainy summer day, keep an eye out for these guys in the roads because that's a lot of times when they, they, they um, are out and moving and sometimes get hit by cars. Um, if you do see them in the road, make sure you're with an adult. Your adult says it's safe. Um, and you can go and help that box turtle cross the road. Um, so you always want to carry a box turtle like this across the road and help them go in the direction that they're going. So don't turn them back around and put them um, back on this other side. As they'll just turn right back around and go into the road again. Um, so that's one way that we can help these box turtles. Um, they're pretty um, dynamic, cute little animals, and I love finding these guys out in the wild. Great, so that is our little willow, our eastern box turtle. I'm going to put her back. And I also have another reptile with me today. This reptile is non-native. So it's a reptile that you're not going to find in North Carolina. In fact, it's not even native to um, North America. So it's not even found on our continent. Um, the animal that I have is a bearded dragon. Um, so our bearded dragon, Bernard, is pretty large lizard, you can see. Um, this bearded dragon was born and in captivity, so he was, um, they breed these lizards um, in captivity and then they use them as pets. Um, so he wasn't taken from the wild. Um, but these guys are actually from, or natively found, in Australia. So that's a big continent all the way across the world. It's really hot in Australia. There's a lot of desert in Australia. Um, so Bernard here is perfectly adapted to 
um, living in a desert. So you can see he's got a lot of tough scales on his body and his camouflage really helps him blend in to like a sandy desert environment. Bernard loves to eat um, different kinds of meat. So he eats insects, crickets, different kinds of worms, um, but they also eat a salad as well. Um, so they eat both plants and meat. Um, and we have to keep his um, home at the Arboretum really um, hot. So he has one side of his enclosure that cannot go below 95 degrees. Um, so they re he requires um, a lot more heat than, than we find here in North Carolina. So if I were to set Bernard free, he probably would not survive. It gets a little too cold for him. Um, also, um, he has, why they're called bearded dragons is because he has some scales underneath his neck and on the side of his face. And when he gets scared, um, if he thinks that someone is trying to eat him, he will, um, he will puff up his little scales under his chin and make himself look really big and really scary. Um, and, but I can actually touch and pet his spikes and they don't even hurt. So they're not even real spikes. They're just to make him look really scary. What? I'm going to walk around and put him Oh, up. yes, yes. That's good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so you can see those scales really up close, right under his neck and his spikes right here. So you can see that I am petting his spikes, so they're not even very sharp. They're just kind of there to... Um, to make him look really scary and intimidating. So one difference between a lizard and a snake, you may think it's that there's that snakes don't have legs, but actually there are legless lizards in this world, which is pretty wild. Um, but lizards actually have ears and snakes do not. So you can see Bern Bernard here has got some pretty big ear holes. And he also is blinking too, so a snake does not have eyelids, where lizards do. So that's the big difference between a reptile and a, or I'm sorry, a snake and a lizard. Great, I'm gonna put Bernard back, and I'm gonna take out, while I'm up here, I'm actually gonna take out our smallest animal that I brought. This animal is not a reptile, so remember that a that herpetology we are studying amphibians and so he does not jump away. We are studying amphibians and reptiles. So this is a great example. Woo! <laughs> and he's escaped in the hey, studio. Man. <laughs> hey man. Artist. So if I put him like this, maybe we can look at him better. A bit more. There we go. He doesn't like to be held quite as much as Bernard does. Um, so this is a tree frog. Um, this is a Cope's gray tree frog. It is an amphibian. So you notice he has really squishy, smooth skin. He does not have um, scales like our reptile friends we looked at and he actually started his life as an egg in the water so all amphibians lay their eggs in ponds and in lakes um, whereas Willow and Bernard they hatched out of their egg on land so that's kind of our big difference between reptiles and amphibians this frog will hatch out of the water, then move to land and live most of its life up in trees. Um, so we don't see them quite as much, maybe as other frogs, but they live way up in trees and you can see he has really great camouflage to really blend into the branches and to the um, leaves up in the trees. Cool. Nice. 
nice. All right. We had an exciting animal escape. All right, so there is one last thing I wanted to talk to y'all about. Um, we have a program at the Arboretum called Eco Explore. Eco Explore is a free science program for any kid um, ages five through 13. Um, so when you participate in Eco Explore, you get to go outside, take photos of plants, animals, insects, anything that's wild outside. You submit those photos onto our website, and then we take those photos and we give them to scientists to use in real research projects. So your photos are helping scientists because a, a scientist cannot be everywhere at once. They can't, be, they can't see all of the animals um, and all of the plants in the world. So they rely on people just like you to help them in their research. Um, so you take your photos, we give them to scientists to use. Our, uh, we want to reward you for all of your hard work when you're helping scientists. So all of your photos that you submit to Eco Explore gets points. So you can get up to five points per photo. Um, and you can trade those points in for different prizes. So I brought just a couple prizes with me today. Our biggest prize is a iPod Touch. Um, it is a thousand points. So it's a lot of work to um, earn our iPod. But if you do earn it, you can take your photo and you can submit your photos all on this device. Um, so a thousand points seems like a lot, and it is. It is a lot of work. But I know someone who earned their iPod in three months by working really, really hard. Um, so it's definitely something that you can work towards. Um, we have some smaller prizes too, like I brought along these birds that make, make the noise of their their bird species. You can hear what different kinds of birds sound like. Um, you can earn this by taking your photos. We also have like a trail camera, which is really fun. You can put this out anywhere and see what kind of animals are hanging around, um, maybe when that are too afraid to come close to you. Um, you can capture them on this as well. We have a lot of other prizes, so you can go to ecoexplore.net and see all the other things that you can earn. Um, and this program is really good right now because you can do this program 100% on your own with your family, and we mail you your prizes in the mail. Um, so it's something that, that families can do together, spend time outside, be really safe, um, and about science and nature. Um, so we have prizes in Eco Explore. We also have badges. Um, so right now we are in our herpetology season, so that's why I brought my um, scaly and slimy friends with me today. Um, to earn a badge, this is not the actual badge, it's a small iron-on badge you can earn. Um, you take six herpetology photos, so six reptile or amphibian photos. You do some special challenge, and then we will mail you your herpetology badge. Um, we have four main badges that we use throughout the year. After herpetology, we go into entomology, the study of insects. So you take your six insect photos, you do special challenge, and we will mail you your entomology badge. After that, in the winter time, we focus on ornithology, which is the study of birds. Um, so you do your fo six photos, you do your challenge, we'll mail you your ornithology badge. And lastly, in the spring, when all the wildflowers are blooming, we do our botany season. So this is the easiest field season we have, because plants are everywhere, so it's really easy to take your six plant photos. You do your challenge, and then we can mail you your badge. Um, we have a lot of other badges as well. These are our four main ones we focus on but we have what we call bonus badges. So we have a duck badge, we have a snake badge, a dragonfly, mammal badge, we're, and we're adding new badges all the time. Um, so to sign up for Eco Explore, um, so to sign up for this program where you help scientists, you earn prizes, you earn badges, all for free, 
you go to ecoexplore.net, um, you make an account and you submit your photos straight onto that website. Um, and you can join, look at our website to see our other prizes and badges you can earn as well. Um, so that is ecoexplore.net. Um, thank you all so much for joining me and all my animals today. I really enjoyed hanging out with you. I want to put my mask back on because we're headed back to the Arboretum. But thank you all so much and happy exploring.